It became the story that the state of Michigan and beyond fixated on for the last, I don't know, two or three months, I guess. Uh, former State Representative Todd Corser, the conservative Republican, on the other end of our AT&T line right now, and you're listening to Michael Patrick Shields. It was the wee small hours of the morning on Friday that he decided to resign rather than uh, be expelled. And then was it weird for you, uh, Mr. Corser, to watch Cindy Gamrat? I, I think you had to leave the chamber at that stage, but uh, stay there for another hour and then herself be expelled. Um, in other words, what I really like to know, do you talk to her very often anymore? Um, no, not, not as much. I mean, obviously there is, you know, these are cases that are flowing forward and um, you know, we had we had a lot of legislative stuff that was was sort of being um, you know wound out uh, as far as the number of bills and whatnot. And um, but I did get to touch base with her and and kind of kind of hear how that played out. Um, but it you know it's too bad the way that it all happened. And uh, you know I kind of went in with it with with a full expectation that I was going to go all the way um, all the way to the end because there really wasn't evidence to to expel. I mean, it was a ridiculous notion that. You have the people on the floor who hadn't read the report, um, or had read the nine pages of allegations, but then would take the uh, take the unprecedented step of expelling a member. But this goes all the way back. It goes all the way back to the beginning. When honestly, I know people thought it was ridiculous when I noted it, but you know the seat selection process, which is done illegally in the speaker's office, requires you to sign a non-disclosure. Uh, you know that your this caucus non-disclosure. And in the caucus non-disclosure, it says that in, in, in that you will support the speaker's decision. And so, in these hard, hard spots where they need everyone on board, what they'll do is they'll say, "Hey, you know, you, you you're you're part of our group here, and if you want to remain part of our group, then you're going to have to take this hard vote." Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it it really is antithetical to liberty and freedom because what happens is you think your representatives are there to really be able to make their best case for whatever position they have, when in reality the power is so concentrated in just a few people in Lansing, and those people really sort of call the tune and determine how things are going to happen. But, you know, I, I decided right at the uh, the end, it was kind of going around and around, and um, they were giddy on the floor, really, to cast the vote. I mean, you, they're just the laughing and joking, and uh, like I said, and, and had not read the, the evidence that I could tell. Um, and there really was very little that, that would justify the expulsion. And just felt right at the end, uh, God kind of moved in my heart as we were going into those hours, and I saw that they were kind of getting it together um, and that they were going to actually do the, do the expulsion. And just felt like I said, you know, it's time to, time to exit stage, you know, stage right, and, and uh, you know, I'm done here. And uh, so it kind of happened like that. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, you know, there there wasn't anything more than that, and everybody thought there would be after 15 hours a big dramatic end, and um, and sort of, sort of then it was. Uh, I think the whole thing was sort of stolen away in that moment, and the resignation. You know, it was time to do that and and step away. Now she she went obviously forward and and went for the expulsion and became the fourth person in history to be expelled. And quite honestly, I mean, it took tremendous courage for her to do it and uh, to force those those folks to go through it and. What Everyone is, was trying uh, to get her to step away from that, and she she wouldn't. What's your relationship with her like now? Um, I don't. It's it's uh, obviously if there's something that's going on, you know, there's some incident that might be uh, there might be a conversation, but really it was the you know the lawyers were speaking more back and forth themselves. So you, um, she's a, she's a great lady, obviously, and I've I've done you know so many things to to uh, cause her harm and her family and and my own family and uh, the. You know the, the my constituents and also the people of the state of Michigan and and also the cause of Christ and I you know when you have that level of um, you have that level of attainment as far as in in society and in the background it you know clearly your life is at odds with what you're what you're professing publicly and uh, you know it's the level of defeat and distrust that you've um, that that has happened and you know there's there's a certain amount of a you know public you know scourging that's supposed to happen. Uh, when when that when that comes out and it did I mean obviously you know we had we had a lot of pressure in the background uh, with the extortionist situation um, and uh, you know people then didn't believe that because uh, yeah well because you know but, but so, you seem to so. be you seem to want to take the blame uh, when you say you cause harm to her family but uh, I mean 
were you the Svengali? Was she the siren? It takes two to tango, ultimately, if you're going to go about uh, committing adultery. Well, it does. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not negating whatever her responsibility is. I can't speak for her on on her end. I'm just yeah. saying where my responsibility is in all of this. Um, you know, it's mine. And so, coming on, a lot of times when I when I talk to different reporters, as I start to explain the situation, people will say, "Well, you're not taking responsibility for it." Well. Uh, if you ask me a question, I'm I'm trying to expand on it so that you you folks and your your listeners or um, you know that you can understand sort of the context of everything that happened. I would just say for for my part, I you know certainly take responsibility for it and for what I've caused as far as harm. Uh, you know it's it, it's mine and uh, and you know certainly there like you said it takes two to tango, but um, but it takes one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and uh, be wanted to make that decision. So. And I know you, you're um, a, you're a so. student of the Bible, and you're out front with it. So I'm sure that by now someone has mentioned Leviticus 20:10 to you, and that can't be easy for you to read about adultery and and the the penalty for adultery. Yeah, no, I I mean, there's obviously there's um, you know there's some some crazy stuff that's happened. Obviously, with so much support. You know, you have all this visceralness and the Todd haters. Have always been much louder than than those folks who support me, and um, you know, even you know, in my own district and around the around the state and around the the country and really around the world. I had a lady from Uganda say her church was praying for me, you know, um, and you know, you you think how in the world, you know, that that God uses that to, to raise up people who are praying, and I'm very thankful for that. And you know, there's there's a next a next chapter inside of all of this, and. Do you, you remember know, the um, moment when the line was crossed and how it happened? Well, I, not, I mean, it, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, the way that it happened and how it happened, you know, there, there are steps that, that, you know, that people walk through in that direction. And mm-hmm. I don't really want to get into sort of the personal, um, you know, the personal parts that, that, that happened there. But, um, you know, obviously, it's for everybody in the world to see now. And uh, that's, that's for sure. Todd Corser. You'll stay right there. We'll be back one last segment and uh, put a cap on it for the moment. Eight before the hour, Michael Patrick Shields.